Infosys comes up with its results tomorrow, 3.45 p.m., 15 minutes after the market closes. This video will cover my opinion on the stock. I did have it in my portfolio till the last quarter. But after seeing the results in the last quarter plus a deeper analysis, I sold Infosys from my portfolio. In this video, I'll cover some of the reasons why I did so, what the numbers for the previous quarter look like, some of my key observations on Infosys, and in the end, what the numbers could look like tomorrow. This video is slightly critical on Infosys, but it does not advise you on a buy or sell kind of decision for Infosys. That's your own prerogative. Please consult your registered investment advisor to take a decision. Let's now dive deeper into what Infosys might have in store for us tomorrow. Let's start with the very basics. At one point, Infosys used to be a lot more valuable than TCS and the most valuable company in the country. Right now, it is at number 7. It fell 3.65% yesterday, today being a holiday. That is pure expectation of the results. The stock is 22% away from 52-week high. Most stocks, if you look at column G, are not that far off. The distance from 52-week low, Infosys is just 14% away. And in one day, this could touch a 52-week low. Market cap wise, Reliance is at 20 lakh crore. TCS is at 14 lakh crore. Infosys is barely at 6 lakh crore. If I look at the software and IT services sector, the top five companies. Infosys has a lot lower PE than TCS as well as HCL. Wipro has a lower PE than Infosys. And Infosys is the farthest away from 52-week high and closest to the 52-week low. The data speaks for itself. The market is already regarding Infosys as a laggard. And yesterday's fall was a punishment ahead of the results. I'm on the 10-year graph. Overall, the trend was decent but since last three or four years the growth has nearly stalled if you see this one two three four five last few graphs they are kind of indicating flattish growth if you look into price versus volumes the volumes have been kind of dipping not as high they as they used to be price touched a high in january 22 Right now, the levels are nearly the same as May 2021. So long-term investors in Infosys besides dividend haven't got anything for nearly three years now. EPS versus PE ratio. The EPS has been steadily rising. However, the PE has been going down from 40 till 26. This is indicative that market is not expecting a high growth from Infosys right now. Sales and margin more or less flat for the companies of the size of Infosys, radical changes are very low. Overall, if you observe the trend from 10 years, the OPM and NPM both have been declining. This is indicative of lowering of billing rates gradually and increase in price of manual labor over the last 10 years or so. Sales have been increasing over the years slowly now, but market cap to sales ratio has been dropping drastically. Not a great sign for the company. Sales wise, if you look at the quarterly numbers for last five, six quarters, 34, 470, 36, 38, 37, 37, 38, 38. Literally nothing is moving on the sales front. Expenses more or less in line with sales. Employee cost, which is probably one of the root causes is same for decades. What that means is the way they hire people, the way they retain people, the way they train people, all has remained same. Same people who used to work 10 years back, same leverage structure, same hierarchy, same trees probably exist. Because in the age of cloud and AI, labor rates have gone up drastically. If that is not reflecting an employee cost percentage, then it is a cause of concern to me if I was a customer. Operating profit, more or less growing at the same space as sales, OPM, same 23-24% kind of levels. Nothing very different from what has been happening over the last quarters. Profit before tax, no surprises. Net profit, more or less 5.36, 6.5, 6.1, 5.9, 6.2. No changes literally in the number. Percentages wise, we can debate it is 1.1%, 2.2%. But looking at the number from our eyes, literally there is not much happening. One deal here or there 
and that is pretty much it. There is no element of control in these numbers. EPS 39, 45, 52, 58, looking like a 60 kind of year maybe in terms of EPS. Just like TCS dividend payout has been increasing, I've already explained the rationale why companies are giving more dividend these days. You can check that out in the TCS video. Equity capital, there was a bonus issued here. Here again, there was a bonus, bonus. So Infosys has rewarded shareholders more than TCS perhaps here. The equity capital is also a lot higher than TCS, though TCS is a lot bigger company, nearly 2.5x of Infosys. This is what drives me crazy. I had the same observation in TCS case also. Why can't large IT companies utilize their reserves well for the generation of good handsome profit for the shareholders? Can't they reimagine themselves outside the core business? Can they reinvest, maybe become a holding company, start buying shares of other successful companies, invest in other businesses, do whatever. But why this reserve column is continuously increasing and not yielding the results that could be there because of the large amount. There are so many companies in India who can grow exponentially, who can really become global large enterprises, but they don't have cash. They don't have reserves. TCS, Infosys, these companies have reserves, but perhaps they are struggling to understand how to use it constructively, which just amazes me. Capital work in progress is more applicable for construction kind of companies, but I would want to see the investment from the reserves happening in some way where shareholders like you and me would get the benefit thanks to the reserves that have accumulated over the years for business going doing really well. Other assets, 82,000 crores, trade receivable is AR, people who have not paid, cash equivalent, 15,700 crores. Why would you need so much cash equivalent? There is significant cash flow that comes any case from your business. Other asset items, 37,974 crores. Let's do a quick check against what other assets items is producing. 37,900, nearly 38,000 crores. Other income of 2,701 under all possible heads. Normal is 2,553 crores. If you put this 38,000 crores, which is the investable amount available based upon this table, then in one year at 10%, this will generate around 3,800 crores. This amount, other income normal for March 2023 is 2,553 crores, which means that entire amount is generating probably 6 or 7% interest or total income, net income. Really don't know what the CFO and the company are doing with the money. Okay, let's compare the ratios here. This is an interesting thing which I discovered. The debtor days 74, 70, 68, 63. This is the amount other companies or customers which work with Infosys take to repay them. Working capital days around 35 days. That is the amount of time it takes for their working capital to get converted into a business income. I'll not talk about ROCE. I talked about how this number is not reliable in the previous video of TCS. So let's compare debtor days and working capital days of Infosys. Let's just take a reference number of 64 days and 35 days with other companies. Let's go to HCL. 92 days debtor days which means nearly three months it takes for HCL to recover the money from the customers. Working capital days 47. They need lot many days compared to Infosys to convert their working capital into business income. Let's check persistent. Debtor days 69. More than two months. Working capital days 23. Lot lesser. They are able to convert their working capital into business income lot faster. Let's check TCS also once for reference. Sixty-seven debtor days. Working capital days eighty-three. These ratios matter a lot in terms of how the companies are able to utilize the money available to them as working capital and convert that into business income. Companies which are taking lot more time either are running on very traditional businesses or the carries of the people in the field are not aligned towards recovering AR. 
AR is account receivable. Many, many companies have this problem of account receivable where the invoice has been raised, work has been done, customer does not pay, no one cares. Let's go back to Infosys. Promoter holding is pretty low. In case of TCS, Tata's own more than 70%. FIA number more or less in Infosys has been stable, though it increased in 2022 and has gone down to 33.7% in December. Let's go through the client additions part. September 30 versus December 31, the last two quarters. Active customers 1884 versus 1872 reduced. Added 100 in the previous quarter, added 88 in this quarter. But the lost number is not here, which was obviously higher than the added numbers. 1 mil customers reduced from 951 to 944. 10 mil customers reduced from 312 to 308. 50 million customers improved from 80 to 82. 100 million dollar customers improved from 39 to 40, one extra customer. So in a nutshell, the sales pipeline is not looking very strong as of last quarter at least. The number of customers is going down. Sales is barely able to restore the count to the original level in terms of net new additions. Now, if you look at the employee matrix, sales and support just by sheer number is nearly 20,000 people. 6% of Infosys population is sales and they are barely able to maintain the current customer count. Can we double the sales count to double the revenue or at least double the net new customers being added? I'm not too sure. Let me jump to Infosys's website. This may be over critical of me, but I do a lot of stuff in my analysis before I decide to enter a company or exit a company for long-term investments. Homepage of Infosys, okay, gender bias. Infosys and ATP Renew Partnership still 2026. Great headline. Champions Evolve. What is the messaging for whom? What are the kind of people who would come here? Employees, customers. Left side, you have to hover to see what is there on the bullet point. Let's go to this menu. Navigate your next. I really honestly don't know what that means. The Tooltip says the same stuff. Navigate your next. Industries, they cover the whole world. Services, innovate, blockchain, engineering, IoT, all in the same umbrella. I don't know if I would do the same. Insight wise, there's a Topaz product, there's a generative AI which is appearing in Insight. Data analytics and AI as a one term under Insights. Infosys sustainability under Insights. Applied AI. Okay, separately stand out. Where is cloud? Okay, cloud Infosys Cobalt. We'll jump to it. Let's actually click on Cobalt. In, okay, Infosys is at Google Cloud Next. Cobalt is a set of services. 35,000 cloud assets over 300 industry cloud solutions. See more, see more. Client successes. Some things are here. Let's try and see if there's anything about those 35,000 solutions. Read more. A lot of English they asked for it. So I need to contact them to know about the services. Let's go to hybrid cloud. There is private cloud. There is public cloud. There is cloud. Where is hybrid cloud here? I can't see hybrid cloud in hybrid cloud. All right, let's try and find Finical platforms. Infosys Finical. It goes to another website. Let's see what is there on Edge World. So the home page of Edge World, which is an Infosys company, talks about Polaris Edge, not Finical. There is Polaris Edge, there is Assist Edge, Extract Edge. Maybe all these are new names. There are maybe assets that they acquired from somewhere else, maybe Polaris. But the cash cow from yesteryear's decades, Finical is not on the home page. Okay, let's see what Cobalt has. There is a PDF which they've offered for the customers. Home page has just title. Cloud is redesigning enterprises for resilient future. That's good new news. Infosys Cobalt is a set of services, solutions, platforms, which that accepts as a force multiplier for cloud powered enterprise transformation. 35,000 cloud assets. 
cloud first business solutions disrupt the norm cloud first business solution technology solution platform services infosys cobalt labs and playground what they do leverage design thinking ideate experiment incubate this is india's second largest it company which was the darling of the world really don't know if a thousand people company or even a 10 people company will not write all this on their portal in their documents and so on what is the special part of infosys the number two it company in india in terms of my expectations this sales number will probably reduce a little only around 38.5 or maybe 38 no big surprises if this increases but i am expecting on the lower side expenses mostly move in line with the sales if sales reduce expenses reduce if sales increase expenses increase the biggest expense is employee cost that will remain the same number. I would love it if this number becomes 60% or 65%. Though operating margin will reduce by say 4%, which is okay. I'll buy Infosys if this employee cost goes up for delivering the same revenue, which means they are hiring better people. It will actually reflect in higher rates if the salespeople are good eventually. Other income is a tool for the CFO to decide how the result should look like. Rest all, I don't think anyone can change much. This EPS number will be something between 14.5 into 15. You don't need me to predict that. It will be something like 14.5 or 15, which means the annualized EPS, this plus that number, 14 Forza, 56, approximately 58, it would be the annualized EPS for the year. There is nothing analytical in this part. This is purely extrapolation. The TTM EPS is 58.77. The actual will be somewhere around 58 only. The dividend payout may increase slightly, which will make the stock look good, more investable. This is what I was talking about. In three years, CAGR is 1%. That's the net return for the long-term investors. This is a note to the people who think that keeping a stock forever is the best strategy. Over last few decades, not just Infosys, but the top four or five Indian companies in IT's landscape, they have generated enormous amount of cash. They have generated or created enormous amount of value for the shareholders. They have such a high count of employees with them for decades. They have established learning institutes, which they call among the best in the world. But somehow at this juncture, when the overall industry has gone through a complete shift, cloud has replaced on-prem. So some people are now talking about going back to on-prem. AI has totally redefined the way business processing is being done. L0 ops, L1 ops, knock screen jobs, basic toil is being replaced heavily via automation. SRE is a mindset that is required and anyone who has SRE mindset, they become costly. The count is very low. The colleges in India still don't teach any of these mostly. That's my general perception. Some colleges, yes, they do offer courses. Even when I was doing my MCA way back in 1997, the concept of AI was there in the curriculum. It's not very useful if you want to hit the ground running once you join a company. So in this era, if your employee cost has not changed, if you are not spending more on your employees, if your training is more or less putting 100 people or 200 people in a classroom, send them to Mysore, or maybe just putting them on an online course and, and then calling them AI experts. I recently saw that TCS is saying 50% of their people are AI friendly. I honestly don't need data or need to interview these people to know all this is farce and marketing data. This is not the truth. I've been myself into the data AI generative AI world for years now. So I know what it takes. I know that is not available in the large companies, primarily because of the cost and retention factor. Even if they were to hire some good people or train some good people, they will evaporate in a jiffy because there are so many com companies looking for high-end talent, good quality talent and willing to offer double triple of the salary that a typical person will get at say Infosys or TCS. I have talked to some of the managers at these companies in the past. How do you retain people? I am talking about few years back. The answer from the manager from TCS was, we don't allow people to rejoin if they leave us. Great. I have no idea what's the carrot for Infosys people. When I moved to Hyderabad about eight years back, 
when i looked at the fee structure of school my first question to my peers was where do kids of tcs infosys employees study in hyderabad school fees in hyderabad was probably 25 to 50% of annual salary in these firms on an average my opinion is biased i'm admitting that but that is based upon what i have seen with my eyes as a cto in three companies in the world of data cloud ai generative ai i have done these projects by hand i have delivered value to my customers i know what is required to deliver these projects to the customer unless i am selling bodies to the customer which no longer works especially because of the heavy requirement and focus on domain in addition to technology technology is actually become secondary these days it is a lot simplified version of what you used to be there in the cc++ days 20 years back today deep understanding of domain ui ux human centered design customer conversion customer retention all these are lot more important then knowing how to code you need experts for these lot of customers are even willing to pay if the value is there on the table my best wishes to everyone who is holding infosys shares for tomorrow's results i hope that results are great the infosys adr price will probably give an indicator on the general pulse later today i am not very optimistic even if there is a large deal or maybe two of them it will not change the numbers too much infosys needs to pull a rabbit out of their hat do something really drastic utilize the huge amount of cash they have and create something substantial for the shareholders to reinvent themselves if they want to go back to the top 5 ever i personally see this as a leadership crisis and the kras which are more towards revenue generation versus value creation and reinventing just telling your sales guys you need to sell more you need to increase the sales by 50% 40% that does not lead to revenue today you need to give them the right services and products to sell which are aligned with what customers need today the customers need in last 5 years especially since the pandemic have changed drastically and lot of large companies are only aligned with the customer on their websites and marketing material not in reality